JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to GFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week May the 23rd until May the 27th. I am Harald Amos Pissuros, Head of Research here at GFD. I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have several important events and data on the agenda for this week, including the World Economic uh, Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Uh, the first one where uh, officials will gather in Davos uh, following uh, the coronavirus pandemic. We have the preliminary, excuse me, preliminary PMIs from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. We have an RBNZ monetary policy decision. And we also get the minutes from the latest FOMC uh, meeting. So we have several important events to analyze. Let's take things from the beginning. Today, the calendar is not that busy in terms of, of economic releases, with the only one worth mentioning being the German IFO survey for May. The current assessment index is expected to have slid to 95.8 from uh, 97.2, while the expectations one is to have declined to 83.5 from 86.7. This is likely to take the business climate index slightly lower to 91.4 from 91.8. Now on May 10th, the ZW survey revealed a deteriorating uh, current conditions uh, index with uh, the economic sentiment one, uh, while the economic sentiment one, although it stayed uh, into the negative territory, it improved. Maybe this means that uh, the IFO expectations index, which is uh, the corresponding, the similar to the ZW economic uh, sentiment index, so maybe this index could also come in better than anticipated. Uh, and if, if so, this will allow market participants to maintain uh, bets over an ECB rate hike in the next couple of months. This will not make us positive on, on the euro, but taking into account its recent recovery against the US dollar, we will not. It will. It may not trigger the next uh, leg south uh, either. We may get more clarity on monetary policy plans, but also more insights on the global economic outlook um, uh, and during the week until Thursday. I think it's the World Economic Forum, uh, which began yesterday in Davos, Switzerland. Uh, we believe that uh, the main item of uh, discussion will be the war in Ukraine, but we expect other topics to be discussed as well, such as the very high inflation around the globe, fears of a global recession, as well as the COVID restrictions in China. Uh, how, how China is handling uh, uh, the, corona, the coronavirus in general. Now, any opinions coming out from the meeting could well affect the financial markets as they may hint how some major men some major central banks are planning to move forward. In, uh, investors could well adjust their bets, especially if uh, the remarks are made by important central banks uh, officials. If we are not mistaken, among the speakers, uh, we have Fed Chair uh, Jerome Powell, ECB President Christine Lagarde, and Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey. Now, just for the record, Canadian markets will stay closed today in celebration of, uh, of uh, the Victoria Day. Now, on Tuesday, although market participants may be keeping an eye on Davos, most of their attention is likely to be on the preliminary PMIs for May from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. 
as they try to understand how big the risks uh, for a global recession are. In the euro area, the manufacturing PMI is forecast to have declined to 54.9 from 55.5, while the services one is anticipated to have just inched down to 57.5 from 57.7. This is likely to take the composite index down to 55.3 from 55.8. Though pointing to a slowdown, all three indices remain within the expansionary territory which may allow participants to maintain their bets with regards to a rate hike by the ECB soon. However, a negative surprise and a dip below the boom or bust zone of 50 could result in scaling back such bets and thereby increase the selling activity in the euro. So here, if we see the PMIs slowing by more uh, and declining by more than expected and accidentally we see an index falling below 50, this could be the trigger for an up, another leg, uh, for the, a new leg south in the euro to be triggered. There are no forecasts uh, available for the UK prints, but with the Bank of England warning over an economic contraction next year, any negative surprises could bring the pound under selling interests as uh, market participants will bring lower their expectations with regards to the bank's future rate increments. Yes, with inflation in the UK hitting uh, 9%, the Bank of England will most likely continue to uh, lift uh, borrowing costs, but due to fears of a recession, they could follow a slower path than they have been estimating a couple of months ago. Now, flying to the US, there, the manufacturing index is expected to have declined to 57.9 from 59.2, while the services won to tick down to 55.4 from 55.6. Declines in the world's largest economy as well could confirm concerns over a worldwide economic slowdown. However, if the forecasts are met, both, um, both indices will still be above the equilibrium line of uh, 50 and with Fed Chair Jerome Powell hinting that they will proceed with their 50 basis points increments in the next couple of months, we don't expect market participants to change their minds. According to the CME Fed Watch tool, 50 basis points uh, liftoffs are fully priced in for both June and July. In any case, the US dollar could stay under selling interest for a while more, and this is because recent data suggests that the US economy is not immune to the factors affecting other economies. However, it seems that it is still affected the least, and with monetary policy expectations still pointing to the Fed being more aggressive than other major central banks, we will treat any setback in the US dollar as a corrective retreat before the next leg north. The only currencies against which we expect the US dollar to continue underperforming, even when it starts uh, gaining ground against the others, are the yen and the franc. Despite both the Bank of Japan and the SNB staying as the most dovish major central banks, due to their safe haven status, the yen and the franc are enjoying huge, huge amounts of inflows uh, lately. Now, on Wednesday, the spotlight is likely to fall on the RBNZ interest rate uh, decision during the Asian session and to the FOMC meeting minutes later in the day. Getting the ball rolling with uh, the RBNZ, this bank is expected to hike interest rates by 50 basis points for the second time in a row, with a number of total hikes, regardless of, regardless of the size in the post-pandemic era, being five. When they last met, officials of this uh, bank hiked by 50 basis points but noted that they remained comfortable with the outlook for the official cash rate as outlined in February, and that the larger move was intended to provide more flexibility. In other words, they may have decided to hike by more then in order to be able to slow down later. Now, the Kiwi came under selling interest after the meeting, but more, more recently, Due to its uh, strong uh, link or correlation to risk, it has been suffering uh, due to the deterioration of the broader market sentiment. It slowly started correcting a bit higher after the, the release of the RBNZ's latest inflation expectations, and that's maybe uh, why market participants are betting on another double hike, despite the bank's language following the last decision. 
So with that in mind, a 50 basis points hike by itself is unlikely to boost uh, much the Kiwi. For that to happen, officials need to sound more hawkish than in April, leaving the door open for more increments of such kind. So for the Kiwi to gain more, we need to get the 50 basis points hike, but also hoggish comments uh, that more uh, double hikes or a faster rate path could be possible. Now, in case they hike by less or they signal that, uh, again, this was a flexibility move, not intended to steepen the rate path projections, the commodity linked currency is likely to come back under selling interest. Now, passing the ball to the Fed, uh, when this bank last met, it also hiked by 50 basis points, but dismissed the case of a triple hike in June. However, since then, market participants came in peace with the idea of a couple of uh, more double hikes, especially at the time when other major central banks may not proceed that aggressively and decide uh, uh, and decided to, to buy, due to that, to buy a few more dollars. The dollar pulled back again the last few days due to economic slowdown fears. But in any case, with uh, Fed Chair Powell noting in the aftermath, in aftermath speeches that um, they will not hesitate to move uh, more aggressively if inflation does not slow down as expected, it will be interesting to dig into the minutes to find out how many of his uh, colleagues share the same view. If indeed most of them are willing to do more uh, to bring down inflation, then the greenback is likely to end its correction and drift back north. We repeat that it is better to avoid uh, dollar yen and dollar franc as uh, both uh, the yen and franc could continue to benefit from safe haven inflows. Now on Thursday, markets in Switzerland will stay closed due to the Ascension Day, while later in the day we have the second estimate of the US GDP for the first quarter with the forecasts suggesting a confirmation of the preliminary numbers. Canada's retail sales for March are also due to be released. Headline sales are expected to have accelerated 1.4% month over month from 0.1%. While the core rate is forecast to have ticked down to 2% month over month from 2.1%. Now, with Canada's EPIs coming in above estimates last week, decent retail sales may allow market participants to keep the Bank of Canada into the group of the major central banks expected to continue raising interest rates at a fast pace. Now, the big question is how fast and which currencies are likely to feel the heat of any loony strength? We prefer to start examining this after uh, the data are out, and until then we will already have we will already have in hand more data from other uh, major economies, uh, like central bank speeches. Uh, we'll, and uh, excuse me, besides the data, we will also have central bank speeches, an RBNZ decision, and the minutes of the latest FOMC meeting. Now, finally. On Friday, during the Asian session, we already have uh, we will have Japan's uh, Tokyo CPIs for May and Australia's retail sales for April. For April, no forecast is available for the headline Tokyo rate, but the core one is anticipated to have ticked up to two percent from one point nine percent. As for Australia's retail sales, they are expected to slow to one percent month over month from one point six percent. Later in the day, the U.S. personal income and spending data for April are due to be released alongside the core PCE index for the month, which is the Fed's uh, favorite inflation metric. However, it rarely moves the market, as we already have in hand the core CPI rate for uh, the same month. This happens every month. We, get, we first get the CPIs and then the PCE index, and the core CPI and the core PCE index hold a strong correlation and thus, uh, the PC index uh, does not uh, is not a major market mover. Just for the record, expectations are for a slowdown to 4.9% year over year from 5.2%. So, that's it uh, from me. 
Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So, goodbye, have a nice day and a better rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.